Sometimes the best of intentions can create the biggest messes. We plucked this from the headlines. You could not have chickens in White City. Some time ago, there was a concern that without some control, the rural lifestyle would come to roost right in the middle of town. What they did not anticipate is that in the Great Recession of 2011, people would begin growing more of their own food and yes, have a few hens around for a fresh batch of scrambled eggs for breakfast. Jackson County commissioners realized quickly if they waited for the rooster to crow, it would be too late and things could get hotter than a hen house and White City's Humpty Dumpty could have a great fall. Although we jest at the silliness that was the ban on chickens in White City, your Jackson County commissioners quickly looked at the current ordinance, had public hearings, and looked at thoughtful changes needed. In 2004, the county's land development ordinance was amended and it included a chapter that was specifically um, dedicated to White City. At that time, White City was basically upzoned. So prior to that, White City, you know, their lots range from an acre to five acres to 10 acres. There wasn't, there was a core of development, kind of the old development in White City that was less than an acre, but most of the properties were an acre or more. and. Um, White City was designated for urbanization, and that urbanization took, um, looked like now between one unit per acre and 30 units per acre. So White City has, was, like I said, upzoned significantly from what it was. When that land development ordinance, when our land development ordinance was um, moved through the public process, it went to the White City Planning Commission, and the White City Planning Commission was made up of citizens of White City, who looked at that ordinance and determined that it was best to not allow non-intensive agriculture in White City. I think at that time, the prevailing thought, and you know, keep in mind, this is some time ago, that there would be conflicts with large farm animals or farm animals and kind of this burgeoning development of White City. And I think they wanted to avoid that. So they put a provision in the county's, we put a provision in the county's land development ordinance which precluded non-intensive or intensive agriculture in White City and, and really precluded farm animals in White City. Well, you know, fast forward to, um, to 2011 and, you know, there are lots of people who want to do urban agriculture who are looking to help um, themselves and their families feed themselves. Um, and there's this desire, I think, for, for that urban agriculture. So what we did was staff went out and looked at, um, surveyed all of the cities in Jackson County and to see what kind of farm animals, if any, cities within Jackson County allow. And what we found is that most cities don't allow large farm animals. Um, Cities do, cities like Medford and Central Point, Phoenix. Um, Eagle Point allows chickens in some areas, but um, most cities do allow chickens, but they don't allow large farm animals. So in a nutshell, what this ordinance, these changes, these recommended changes do is currently, like I said, none of these animals are permitted in White City. What this does is allow alpaca sheep or goats and miniature horses three per acre, poultry, 20 per acre, with, but no roosters, fur-bearing animals, 50 per acre, so that includes rabbits or mink or other fur-bearing animals, and allowing those sort of three sections in White City. I just would like to say I love the way you guys have this written now. Um, I think that moving forward with it is going to be an awesome opportunity for other families to be more self-sufficient and be able to provide, especially in these hard economic times that we're going through. They're neat to watch. They're great. They teach my children, you know, self-responsibility. They, you know, and... Again, they provide for my family, my neighbors. None of my neighbors would complain. They get free eggs. Um, so, you know. So you bought off your neighbors. I did, absolutely. <laughs> um, I have five, 
and I live on a quarter of an acre. And meets and the family needs, uh, it those five? exceeds my family needs, yeah. which is nice yeah. because then yeah. I've got a neighbor beside me who has four kids and a neighbor behind me who has three, you know, has been six, seven months since they've had to purchase eggs. So, yeah. and, Very you good. know, holidays and all that good stuff, it's nice to have. They taste so much better. I mean, they eat bugs. Mm -hmm. They take care of pests. We don't have to buy pesticide because of them. You know, egg laying, feeding the family, and they eat. If you ever never want fleas on your dogs or your cats, get chickens. <laughs> Not kidding. And the one thing that I get excited about is when my grandkids come out, and they have each one of them have a chicken by it, and they call it by name, and they hold it, and they pet it, and they're getting into 4-H, and you will never see a child that's in 4-H go out on the street and cause trouble. Very few. And they feed my children. They feed my children's children. You know, they're just they're they're the American way. All right. Anybody else wishing to speak, pro or con? Anybody opposed? Is there anyone sp uh, speaking against the change in the ordinance? All right. Probably uh, be tarred and feathered. Oh. Last call. <laughs> no pun intended. Oh, great pun. That was a good <laughs> pun. Now you can have just the right amount of hens in your backyard. Some say that government does not listen or moves way too slow, but not in Jackson County. Here we are not chicken to make a stand.